Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Mark. Today I'm going to show you how I built a project that I have been planning for a while. It's called Roulette. And you probably know the game from television or maybe if you've ever been to a casino you've seen it in action. Because we're actually going to build a roulette table. Although a real roulette table has nothing electronics about it, we are going to do an electronic version. So let's get started. To build this digital roulette table, uh, we're going to do some hardware and after that we're going to do some coding in Arduino EDA. Let me start by showing you the hardware components. First we have our ESP32 dev kit 1, we have our audio board and I2S board, we have a push button to start the ball rolling, of course we have a power switch because we want to switch it on and off, we have a header that I will use to mount those PCBs on a breadboard. We have our special LED strips and they're special because they're already pre-shaped. They're actually a round shape and when you put four together you have a nice circle. We have our battery and our battery holder and of course we have a speaker. Now all of that we're going to put into a housing which is this one. Don't mind the circle on top, that's something we need later. And we're going to use, as I said, a little breadboard to mount everything on. While we're at it, don't forget the wires. The casing I chose is very useful. It consists of four parts. It has a bottom, it has a top shelf, and it has two side panels. And since the mechanical work is not that complicated, it's very limited, uh, so I'll just show you quickly. I put a, a hole on top. I drill a hole for the, for the push button. We'll make a big hole here for the speaker. And in one of the side panels, a side panel like this one, in the side panel I uh, put a power switch and a battery holder. And then of course the most important thing is the position of the LEDs. For that I created a paper circle that has the exact size of the diameter of the lettering. So it's easy for me to mount them. I can just put the paper temporarily in and glue on the LEDs on the housing. And to connect the LEDs to the PCB I will drill a hole underneath the LEDs to feed through any wires later. And that's basically all the mechanical work. So let's just skip on to electronics and do the fun part. Okay, so the schematic is not complicated. It's basically an ESP32 microcontroller and I decided to use a DO-IT dev kit one, but you could use other ESP32 boards as well. Of course, we have a LED strip that I'm going to connect and I have an audio board that needs uh, interfacing to the ESP32 with a few wires. Then we have a push button and a power switch. All in all, it's a number of components you can call on one hand and there's no really uh, need to design a PCB. So I'm just going to assemble everything on a little breadboard um, and then connect the wires on the bottom and we're good to go. Okay, so I um, placed the little PCBs on my breadboard and we have a few headers that we need for connections and now it's time to, uh, you know, wire it up. I already put them in place so they don't fall off and as you can see I already did a few wires and it was kind of a test, so now we're just going to finish that all up. Use the schematic to find out how to wire this up. It's not that hard, it's only a few wires, and then uh, just follow it, and you should be good. Don't worry if the wires are too long, um, it doesn't really matter. It's not a high frequency board, and the signals going over is a few kilohertz, and everything will be fine, as long as you stick to the schematic. So that's all the wiring. It looks kind of like spaghetti, but it's only 11 wires, so that's okay. It's not a high frequency board and basically I'm only building one so there's no real need for designing a PCB. For my purpose this will do just fine. Now let's put back the audio board. There we have it. Now with all the wires done, let's uh, put this all in the box and connect the LED strip, the switches and the uh, other components. So we're going to connect these uh, circles together. So these PCBs they have little markings. And it basically says ground 5 volts and data in. Now it says 5 volts, but these LEDs usually also work at 3.3 .3 volts. It kind of depends on the manufacturer. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So if they don't, then you'll need to uh, reconnect your LED power and connect it to 5 volts instead of the 3.3 .3 volts. But that's only if it doesn't work. So far, I found it to work most of the time. So we'll see later. Now, first we need to connect these LEDs and we need to form a circle. 
and I'll connect the middle pin first and what it does is it's connecting the data out to the data in at least that's the idea and for it I am going to use a header pin like so that I will cut up in pieces it's nice now this should align so all we need to do is connect the wires we'll connect one wire to data in like so of course we'll connect the ground and then the green red we do to the power five volts and there you have it that's your LED ring so we made a few holes in the housing we have one for the speaker uh, we have one for the LED wires and of course we have one for our push button that will go right there and then in the side panels and one of the side panels I made a hole for a power switch and a slot for our battery holder that will go right there and of course our switch so I need to check this push button because it has um, normally open and normally closed contact question is which is what and I think we need those two which means this one will not be used okay so I wired up the speaker now I'm going to wire our little battery compartment connecting it to the switch and of course from the switch the cable that goes to the PCB later and then we need a ground wire I wired the switch I wired the push button I wired the speaker I wired the LEDs so let's place everything in the housing and connect it to the main PCB for that we'll take the bottom plate and we'll take our PCB which is going to be mounted right there so this one will go here connecting the wire right there so that's our power circuit remaining is the push button and the LED like so of course we have our speaker let's temporarily put it there I will glue that in later I intentionally keep the wires longer because I still need to glue up a few things and since we have plenty of space that's not a problem it's a very big housing and I don't really need space I just like the housing a lot so you just put in the wires I must not forget to tie that later and of course we have our LEDs so everything connected and before I tighten everything up let me just check everything's loose nothing's glued on I just want to do a quick run before I glue up everything using hot glue because I will use hot glue to put these in place and of course to hold the speaker and the main PCB I will just use some hot glue that will be enough to fix it but first I need to know that this baby does what it's supposed to do and there it goes so that will be just fine so let me tighten this up a bit and then we're good to go do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! Okay, so once you have loaded the sketch, there are a few things you need to do. First, you need to make sure your uh, ESP32 boards are installed. For that, you go to Preferences. You click this additional board manager URL and then make sure to add this specific line. Once that is done, you can go to the board manager, board manager, and then you can install the ESP32 package. Make sure your uh, finding the version by Expressive and not Arduino ESP32 uh, that will be this one and I installed version 106 I know there is higher versions at the moment but I know 106 is stable so that's for now that's why I keep using it you also need to install the FastLAT library and you need to install the audio library and you can install those files by going to the library manager and once that is loaded, you can uh, add the specific files. I'll 
just wait for it to load. The fewer libraries you have, the quicker it will go. Now let's try the fastlet and then you'll find it. Here it is, fastlet, and then you press install. Of course, I already have installed it, so I will not reinstall it. Uh, and you do the same for the other uh, two libraries, the easy button and the audio library. And then you're good to go basically to compile it and upload it. You do that by pressing this button, it will start compiling and then you can upload. But for now, let me just walk you through the sketch a bit. Basically what I do is a few steps. First, I declare some variables and I include some libraries. I include my libraries and I define my variables. And then of course I run setup once. And during that setup, uh, there's a few things that I will be doing. I will initialize the button that I'm going to use. I initialize the serial port. And this one is uh, very important. I define a specific task for the second core because the ESP32 is dual core and I'm using one core dedictedly to uh, just play audio and I don't want anything to interfere when I play audio so the audio sounds smoothly and with the other core I will do the LED animations. Of course I initialize our uh, audio board, uh, our LEDs of course and then uh, I always get feedback through the serial monitor, so if you keep that connected, you'll see what's going on. I also run a demo, and that's uh, basically a function I wrote at the bottom, it's here. And what I do is I animate the LEDs briefly, and I play a welcome sound, which is a short mp3 file. And then uh, when the setup is done, it will go to the main loop. And in the main loop, all it does is monitor my audio. If something to be played, then it will play a chunk of audio and it will check the buttons if a button is pressed. And it just keeps repeating that. While the second core, um, that's a whole other story, because in the second core, I initialize the play of the sound. It's not actually the playing of sound, but I tell it what file to play and I animate the LEDs. And the animation of the LEDs is also sequential. First, I will accelerate the LEDs, so it looks like a ball starts spinning. And then uh, I do a few laps, I determine a random number, and then I slowly stop it, decelerating until it comes to a full stop. And that's all there is to it. And the code is straightforward, it's not complicated, it's uh, less than 250 lines of code with lots of comments so feel free to take a look if you have any questions about it drop me a note and i'll see what i can do to answer your questions i want all your money let's play a game are you ready all bets are off it's 50. Give me all your money. Number 23. It's 23. Dealer wins. Okay, with upcoming holidays, now I have a nice game of roulette that I can play with the family. And I live in Holland, so there is always a holiday coming. So that's good news. Honestly, this is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh, please visit the Element 14 community. We have a project page that uh, shows some more info about this project. You can find the schematics uh, and everything you need to uh, build your own version. And please, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them there. Until then, I see you next time.